food because their metabolism slows way down. They'll go, they'll, they'll go down to the bottom of the bucket and they, they just kind of do their thing for the winter. Cause you know, the fish don't freeze over winter mm-hmm. um, unless they get caught in the top few layers, but yeah, they just take care of themselves. It's, it's really simple, easy thing to do. You could make some money off of it by selling the fish. If they breed, you can put some shrimp in there, um, little, you know, brine shrimp or something like that. You could sell their bait and all that sort of stuff, and you can make a little money off of it. Uh huh. Um, but that's that was a real interesting thing that I learned from Mike, and um, that we put into play here. Um, we want to do bee and keep bees. Where I think we're going to have two or three beehives, um, and that's a a tricky process. It, it's it takes some learning before you get started. How so? Um, uh, you have to know, well, you have to know how to spot a queen in a bun- bunch of bees, first of all. Okay. It's really hard. <laughs> Caitlin's getting better at it. She had, she does like these little practice videos. Um, but you need to be able to recognize if the hive is sick, whether they need more of a certain type of food, whether they're getting enough uh, moisture. You can get, the whole hive can get um, too much moisture in it and get mildew. Or you well, how, how do you how do you start a hive? You get a queen, and you just put a queen in there, and I guess the bees just show up. Okay, you say <laughs> how do you how do you get a queen? Do you buy it at the you store? Buy it on you... the internet. Oh, okay, <laughs> you just buy them on the internet. And there's a lot of people around in our area, um, and really there's beekeepers everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could just find a local beekeeping club and start meeting people, which we've done, and they will mentor you through the whole process because they want more bees we it, more bees is great for everybody um but there's a guy locally here he has i don't even know how many hives but he travels he'll put his hives on a truck and travel to california and they pay him to for his bees to pollinate the um almond trees mm-hmm. and he makes a living off of raising bees and travel around and pollinating <laughs> You mean he just he, he goes from South Carolina to California, lets the bees yeah. pollinate, they go back into the hive and he drives home? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if some get left behind. I don't know like how how it really works. But um yeah, he's got people to call like Pete a lot of peach orchards up here and stuff like that, uh that he'll take his bees up there to pollinate. I don't know how long it takes either. I, mean, I guess they he just leaves them there for the spring mm-hmm. i'm guessing i don't know interesting but, yeah they talk about like they'll have rival um bees will come over like who are these bees coming in our area and they'll like talk it out up in the air and figure out who's going where and they don't mix in with each other um sometimes they'll fight it out it's it's really strange really really strange so you're looking to get into uh beekeeping beekeeping because we want the wax and the honey okay so no or barter okay and like and i guess of course for pollination i mean there's a there's, right. there's a there's a big problem with with bees uh right. that the bee population is really dropping i think it may have leveled off but they don't know if it's because of uh microwave signals yeah. if it's because of the pesticides or the herbicides that they're using on on the plants they're not really sure a combination of all of them they don't know but yeah. friend if the bees go away we're in deep trouble big trouble yeah. um nothing will grow I mean, no more fruit no more flowers um no more food serious trouble. no more food yeah um so that's what we want to grow our own fruit trees we we have we bought just bought two apple trees and a pear tree that, you know, it'll be years before we get any fruit off of them, but mm-hmm. we want to be, you know, able to grow our own fruit and can it trade with other people in the area. I've got some friends that raise cattle, so it'd be nice to trade, you know, apple butter and honey and fruit and vegetables in exchange for some beef. The stories that I hear, <clears throat> the argu- I say the argument that I hear, uh, I'm not going to say against homesteading, but against doing all this stuff yourself. Okay, 
So you put in all this work and time and effort and money, like, like your apple trees. Let's say, let's say it's seven yeah. years before you get apples off this apple tree. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just go to the store and buy apples? They're not that expensive. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. Um, it's, it's, this isn't, this isn't me asking the question. This is the question I've had right. people ask others. Right. It's, it's the process. It's literally the fruits of your labor. Mm-hmm. The apples taste better. They just, it's probably a psychological thing, but some vegetables that you grow on your own, that you planted the seeds, you tended the garden, you pulled the weeds, you protected the garden, the vegetable, they're, they're probably are literally more nutritious, but it's, it's the journey, not the destination, I should say. I, 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 I would agree with that. I, I don't have a garden per se in the yard, but I have a variety of large pots. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sure. I'll grow some, a couple of tomato plants and, uh, but primarily what I'll grow and peppers, but primarily what I'll grow are spices, Mm, herbs. I'll grow sweet basil that I have on my caprese salad, probably four days a week in the summertime. I'll grow, um, oregano, that we put in pasta salad or pasta dressing or pasta sauce, I should say, uh, mint that I throw into my smoothie in the morning or throw into my, uh, mo- mojito in the evening. Uh, I'll, I'll grow uh, rosemary, which is wonderful on all kinds of grilled meats. Yeah. Uh, and spices are expensive. Spices they are very expensive. And you're not getting fresh spices. No, no, you're not. And so I've, I've found satisfaction as well as value in growing my own spices. Mm-hmm. Now if, to try, to try to get value out of, of around here anyway, out of growing your own uh, jalapeno peppers, for instance, it's fun, but you can go to the store and you, you can't, you can't spend a dollar on enough on the jalapeno peppers. Is it, they're that, they're that cheap. And the plant is $3, so you're not making any money off of it. But, no. but it's just, it is the satisfaction of having your own, your own, your own food. And that's really it. And it's, you know, let's say I have 50 jars of apple butter. You know, what am I going to do with 50 jars of apple butter? Well, I can go trade apple butter. And I've done this. We've done this with our blueberry jam. We'll trade for a, a friend of ours that makes um, beeswax candles. I can't make beeswax candles yet, and those things are expensive at the store. Mm-hmm. And then, but and vice versa, he can't make blueberry jam, um, but he would like some. So we there's a, there's an equal exchange there, mm-hmm. and there's something with that that's satisfying as well. That you know, in in a lot of business negotiations, both parties kind of walk away both not happy. Right, because you, know, you, you kind of both gave up something that you really didn't want to. Um, but in these sorts of bartering transactions, both parties walk away happy because, well, yeah, I really wanted some blueberry jam, and then we really needed some beeswax candles. So it's a it's a good exchange where both parties are happy with it. And Uncle Sugar gets how much of that in taxes? Zero. Exactly. I think that might be that might be the most satisfying that part is of it the of all. Most satisfying part. That's right. <laughs> um, so it's it's like I said, it's the journey, not the destination. I enjoy getting dirty and working in my yard, and this is my homestead, and this is my land, and I'm yep. tending it, and this is you know what man is supposed to do. <clears throat> I, I will, for, to, for those of you who are rolling your eyes out there, I know exactly what he's talking about. And for those of you rolling your eyes out there, consider this. You go out on a Saturday afternoon and you fertilize your grass, you water it, and you cut it. And you sit back and you look at it and say, wow, my yard looks great. Mm-hmm. That's satisfaction too. So it's a different type of satisfaction though. And, yeah. and you can't eat your grass. No, <laughs> you, 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 you do it out of a sense of satisfaction. Yeah. In fact, you'd probably yell at the kids for running all over it. And... Yeah. Especially if you're an old guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but you get your, you get your personal satisfaction 
Plus you get a buck or two out of it. Plus you get to eat something yummy. Yeah. So and we I, meet a lot of really nice, interesting people that are also living this lifestyle. It's just, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it, it, it's satisfying. That's the only word to really attach to it. Well, I will go cool. to, we have a farmer's market here in the neighborhood and I'll go up wow. there occasionally and it's the people selling their own stuff. And it's wow. all, it's all, it's all got to be within like a, like a five County area. So it's all local stuff. Okay. Yeah. And it's funny because if you go this time of year, you think, well, why would you find produce at the market this time of year? If it's got to be in it within a five County area, these people have right. greenhouses. Exactly. And they, yeah. and, and, uh, and the, uh, hyperponic, is that the word? Aquaponic. Aquaponic. Yeah. And they, yeah. they, they grow stuff in, in water bins and, and they yeah, advertise be, it yeah, as such. Yeah, could be hydroponic, mm-hmm. which is all water. Mm-hmm. And you add nutrients to that. Right. Aquaponics is more natural. Yeah. The, the hydroponics is what I see at the farmer's market more. But again, the, yeah. these people, you will never meet a crabby one. You will never meet an angry no. one. They're always <laughs> as happy, smiling and friendly as, as yeah. they can be. And I don't think it's because they're making a king's ransom on what they're selling on a Saturday yeah. afternoon. Certainly not. No, it's the it's the fellowship of being around other growers and somebody actually wanting or needing something that you can provide. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> but I do enjoy the Vote Map podcast. I enjoy the the uh, the Homestead podcast. And they're both on the Swamp Fox Radio Network or Podcast Network. Tell me about yes. that. Well, this is a new thing we're starting. Um, our own podcast network where we are soliciting input or shows from anybody else who wants to put one out. Um, not just here in Kershaw County, but anybody can record a show on your laptop or on your cell phone even. And send it to us, and we will upload it in our network, and you'll be part of the Swamp Fox podcasting network. Um, and the Swamp Fox is a regional thing um, that comes from the Revolutionary War times. But um, this is uh, – we, we want other people to start using their voice, and we don't care if you agree with us or disagree or we agree or disagree with you. We're not into that – into judging, you know, but we want to support each other. So, you know, like we do, James, you know, you'll come on my show and I come on your show. Mm -hmm. Um, We would do the same or we would say, Hey, if you're interested in um, local mysteries, check out this podcast. Um, And we can just kind of plug each other and help, help each other get the words out. So if you wanted to start a podcast, but really had no idea how to do it. Yeah. Contact you. Contact us, Swamp Fox Podcast Network. Um, look for Matt on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> or you can email James and he'll get you in touch with me. I can do that. I can do that too. James Strong Show at Hotmail dot com. Uh, mm-hmm. now, now on Facebook, is it just Matt or is it vote Matt now? It's just Matt. Just M A T T Matt. That's right. <laughs> in South in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we probably should get a website up soon. We're we're trying to talk to some people who could help us out with that. Um, I'm not super tech savvy. Um, barely, you know, I'm on my, my smartphone. That's the only piece of technology I really own. Uh-huh. Um, so if anybody out there wants to help us design a website, that'd be great. Um, but I think that would be our next step is to start a website. And we, we do accept, you know, donations if people want to, gives a little bit of money here and there. I don't think anybody's given anything yet, though. <laughs> but um, we're, I think we're going to do videos soon, uh, especially in the springtime when we're prepping our gardens and growing stuff. And we use BitChute instead of YouTube. BitChute. Um, yeah. It's kind of like the way YouTube used to be. Okay. Good okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Um, you know, they don't censor or anything. Um and it's, it, I kind of hate that I have to use Facebook, but nowadays it's, it's like the, you know, local radio stations that everybody used to gather around and listen to the news on the radio station. It's kind of true. It's kind of true. You know, um, it's really the only way right now. And 
So we have to be careful. I'm always constantly getting banned on there, <laughs> speaking my mind. 